This is a great pleasure to talk to somebody who is representing Bell helicopters because the Bell, uh, let's say Cobra, was the first in the world combat helicopter introduced in the real fighting and uh, exhibiting very good, great values of the new category of the, of the flying vehicles. This is a, a combat helicopter. And right now you are once more again, after two years, uh, going to do introduce you uh, Zulu Viper model uh, for the Polish authorities. What is uh, what are the what are the uh, peculiar issues in which the your helicopter is better than competitors? Yes, Bell's especially for the Polish market, yeah, for the so Poly -Poly Polish users. Well, the the H1 Zulu Viper is a great platform for the Polish market for the Polish government. You know, we did Bell designed and developed the first attack helicopter, the, the Cobra in Vietnam. Really changed the way the world looked at attack or attack missions. The Huey in Vietnam changed the way the world looked at vertical lift combat. Uh, the H1 Zulu is the world's premier attack helicopter and it's at the lowest cost, both from a manufacturing and acquisition and a long-term sustainment cost. So for, for capability and cost, the H1 Zulu Viper is without a doubt the best platform in the world. So because uh I think uh, I think you also consider to use the Polish uh, defense industry and aviation industry capabilities in, in uh, let's say, joining offering uh, the uh, Zulu version for the Polish uh, for Polish uh, land forces aviation. Uh, can you please provide us some details of your talks with the uh, potential cooperation with, with the Polish defense industry and aviation industry? Yeah, we see Poli the Polish industry as a great opportunity for Bell. Bell is. I consider Bell an innovation company, a technology company that's changing the way the world looks at vertical lift, uh, between our future vertical lift, on-demand mobility, commercial platforms, military platforms. There is a lot that Bell is working on that's going to change the future for vertical lift. Uh, so working with a company like, say, PGZ in Poland to find ways to do more in Poland is good for Bell and uh, cer certainly good for the Polish economy and, and, and of course, the Zulu is the great and the perfect platform for the Polish military. So you have a scenario of the talks between the PGZ uh, companies, uh, uh, do you? Uh, it means uh, detailed uh, talks on the cooperation and uh, on participation of those facilities and, and production lines and, 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 uh, f uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, companies in potential co-production or the participation in if the Zulu will be selected by the Polish. So absolutely, one of the things we're working very closely on here in Poland is to figure out ways we could partner with Polish companies mm -hmm. uh, for the H1 Zulu. And again, we're uh, Bell's a technology company that's doing a lot of things in the future, leading really industry on looking at the future. So we're looking for companies and, and countries where we can partner with. So Polish uh, future combat helicopter program will be started once more again after the two years of the uh, deadlock right now and this is the name that Kruk and uh, you started your promotion of the Zulu uh, two years ago right now it's uh, uh, something which you have uh, uh, in your portfolio it means two uh, international orders from Pakistan and uh, from Bahrain plus the great uh, interest in uh, uh, such a countries like Czech Republic uh, can you uh, provide us the your vision of cooperation if the Czech Republic will select Zulu and if Poland would select Zulu, so that would be two countries in the Central Europe which could be interested in joint operation of, of your helicopter. Yeah, so we're, uh, Bell produces, builds and produces all of our H1 Zulus right now in Amarillo, Texas. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot of opportunities around the globe because the, the platform has got such great capabilities at the right cost, uh, the lowest cost for manufacturing, ac acquisition, sustainment. So we believe that uh, across Europe there's several opportunities. Of course, for foreign military sales, we work through the U.S. government to the uh, partner nations. But there is plenty of opportunity for us to work closely with uh, companies here in Poland. If you compare the operation, because the, the, the purchase of the combat system, combat helicopter system, is not a simply just the first order, but it's a, a life cycle cost.
it means operational costs and everything. When you compare the total cost of the operation of your helicopters when with uh, with the competitors, uh, what the, what can uh, be with uh, the result of that comparison? Well, it's an easy comparison for us. It's a significant less total operational cost in purchasing, it, uh, in purchasing, in, the, in, in procurement, pr first. In procurement, sustainment, parts, uh, logistics, maintenance, uh, the, the whole. Total life cycle cost of an H1 Zulu Viper is significantly less than our, our competition, with the same or greater capability. How many how many years uh, does had right now uh, the Viper Zulu in front of the uh, in front of us? It means in the hands of the your uh, export customers, Pakistan, mm -hmm. uh, Bahrain, and uh, uh, U.S. Marine Corps. It's. Uh, 20 years? 30? Oh, I think the United States Marine Corps plan to use the, uh, the the Zulu for for many years to come. It's probably a better question to ask them. But So this is not outdated? Oh, no, no. It's, we're still this building. This is not a simple yeah, new version not, yeah. of the v v v venerable co Cobra yeah. from the Vietnam War. Cobra was an amazing platform, right? But uh, this aircraft is a brand new aircraft built from the ground up. With the, some ancestry of the Cobras. Well, it's, it's certainly, it's uh, the ancestry of all the Bell products, a uh, proven company for 80 plus years on building tech innovative uh, pro products. But the Zulu is a brand new platform designed specifically for the United States Marine Corps to conduct in the harshest environments around the globe, built for maritime operations, but built for the desert, built for the cold, uh, the UH-1 Yankee, similarly, you know, those are 85% common platforms. So that's another reason why the total life cycle cost when you have a comparison between Yankee and the Zulu together. Uh, so the, the platform, the, the Zulu is a brand new platform the United States Marine Corps are using now globally, and they're still being built brand new off the line in Amarillo, Texas. Now switch, please switch into the new, uh, let's say, futuristic subject. Uh, uh, the U.S. Uh, Army, U.S. Uh, uh, armed Forces are going to switch into the new helicopter fast robust, reliable, and uh, let's say this is a new platform uh, which could provide a new capabilities for the, for the, let's say, vertical lift, future vertical lift. And you propose uh, Valor, uh, which is uh, uh, significant because in January achieved the, uh, achieved the goal of uh, 280 knots. It is uh, 519 kilometers per hour. Mm -hmm. This is a uh, fast. Uh, how far you are in winning that competition for <laughs> for the armored for U.S. Uh, armored forces? Yeah, well, the V-280 Valor is an amazing platform. We flew when we said we would. You know, with our contract with the United States government, the United States Army's got lead on that. But a very much a combined Marine Corps Army Special Operations Command uh, a re request for information just came out uh, this past week, uh, and I think that RFI clearly shows that our platform is in the lead. Uh, one of the requirements is an objective to get to 280 knots, which is the Valor has already done via, uh, 280 knots. Which is two, uh, two, two, two times uh, faster than the Black Hole is able to achieve, right? Absolutely. Now. So twice, over twice the range, twice the speed, uh, building platforms with... Uh, and the fuel efficiency. Uh, fuel efficient because you're on the wing. So the, the platform is, again, from a cost perspective, but we've, we've got over 90 hours on the Valor now, o over 190 hours rotor turn, but 90 hours flight uh, time. We've got over 280 knots airspeed. I think very shortly we'll be announcing even more accomplishments. So we have ab absolutely accomplished everything we said we were going to do, and there's still much more that we can prove with that platform. When uh, we can expect the final uh, uh, solution for, for the future uh, airlift uh, program? Well, so one of the things we've said for four or five years now as we've designed this aircraft digitally to, and built it that the acquisition cycles of the past are no longer valid. We can design and build aircraft much, much more quickly so a 10 to 15 year acquisition cycle makes no sense because technology evolves so quickly. So we, th I think with the RFI that just came out you can see a timeline shift and, and the U.S. government with the Army lead is looking how to go more quickly. Uh, so we believe by 2028 we could certainly have the first unit equipped in the United States Army based on what we've learned in the technology demonstration that we're currently doing. And your competitors introduce a twin rotor, uh, much more conventional helicopter, and uh, uh, is that so that uh, uh, Valor is uh, much more fuel efficient? You well, know, the Valor will certainly be more fuel efficient. Uh, the, the agility of the platform, the, the range, the speed, uh, with the the way that the militaries need to operate now around the globe, uh, 
the platform is going to be uh, more than meet the capability of what the United States Army and Marine Corps and Special Operations Command just laid out in the RFI. And irony is that, that you build the Osprey together with the Boeing. Right now, the Boeing is an opposite camp. It's your competitor in, in uh, future lift uh, uh, competition. So sometimes you are together and sometimes you are competing. Yeah, competition is always good, right? It's what makes, uh, makes pushes everybody to do good products. The V-22 is an amazing platform. It changed the way the Marine Corps operates. We are operates. talking about the Osprey. The Osprey, yes. The first in the world, tilt rotor, combat uh, capable. Uh, uh, aircraft. Yeah, so it's another first that Bell did, in this case working with Boeing, developed the V-22, which has changed the way the Marine Corps operate around the globe. It, it has changed vertical lift, just like the Huey did in Vietnam. V-22 has done it now uh, for the Marine Corps, and, and we believe the V-28 Valor will be the thing that generationally changes how we look at vertical lift. Is that so that the Bell helicopter is going to be a pave, paving the way into the future in, in rotorcraft? <laughs> I, I think we, we have in the past, we are currently, and we will certainly do it in the future, pave the way. And it's not, it's not just the, the Huey and the Cobra to the Yankee and the Zulu, the, the Viper and Venom. It's the V-22, it's the V-280 Valor, it's, uh, the, we got a V-247 Vigilant, which is the Marine Corps looking for a MAGTAF unmanned expeditionary capability. It's on-demand mobility, which is looking at future, how do we move people around in commercial markets? It's our 407 and the commercial aircraft. We, Bell has is an amazing technology capability, and it, and we are really changing the way the world looks at. Uh, so in the lift. end, you are going to increase your efforts in Central Europe to provide, uh, let's say, uh, Viper Zulu for Central Europe right now. Absolutely, we see Poland as a great opportunity for us as a company. We think our platform is the right platform for the Polish military. And we would very much look forward to finding ways to work with the Polish companies to, to meet all of our objectives. Thank you very much, and I wish you success. Yeah, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you it. very much.